Do you think there is an upper limit to human aging? It's not even a question. My objective with Blueprint is to demonstrate aging escape velocity. Super Trends, unlocking innovation. Are you excited about longevity? There's plenty of reason to be. Some experts actually say that in 12 to 15 years, we can stop the aging process. Others say it's, it's nonsense and it's not going to happen. And each expert actually says something slightly different. Some suggest that it will be technology and nanobots that will stop the aging process. Other experts, they talk about how exercise is the key part of staying healthy and living long. Others again, they focus on fasting or the diet that you, you eat. And finally, they are the ones who believe that the supplements you eat are key to a long and healthy life. You might see people here on YouTube like Brian Johnson, for example, Aubrey de Grey, David Sinclair, just to name a few. And they all say something slightly different. So there's good reason to be confused. What I'll try to do in this video is try to clear up what are they saying, what do they agree on, and where do their opinions differ. And maybe most importantly, where do they actually focus? Because they have different focus areas, which could be the reason that they're actually explaining what you need to do for longevity in different ways. So what I'm going to do is I'll take each of these experts and I'll map out their opinions on fasting, on diet, on exercise, on supplements, as well as lining out their focus area. Also, I'm going to categorize them by the type of influencer they are, because some of them are scientists actually trying to cure aging, while others are more educators. They're focusing on helping you with the technology and, and the food that is available right now. And finally, there's uh, the category of investors who are pouring billions of dollars into the longevity industry in the hope to extend their own longevity or in the hope to actually be able to make money off the longevity industry. If this is interesting for you, well, then you should watch this video. Finally, I'm going to talk about the video I did a few weeks back, which was an interview with Aubrey de Grey. He claims that in just 12 to 15 years, there's a 50% chance that he will have cured aging. There were a lot of comments and questions in the comment section of that video. And I'm going to take that discussion up in this video. And that is going to be a very exciting part of the video in the final part. So please watch the whole video. If you like this kind of content, there'll be much more of it here on the Super Trends podcast. So please like and subscribe. Thank you. So a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed Aubrey the Grey who believes that we can cure aging in 12 to 15 years, at least with a 50% chance. So in this video, I'll try to unpack a little bit more. Is it realistic to, to cure aging? What should we actually do to, to live longer? Which advice should we listen to and what should we disregard? So one of his claims is that you will actually start living forever once we get to a stage called LEV, which means longevity escape velocity. LEV is basically the point in time where we can reverse aging at a faster pace than we actually age. So in other words, you may age one year, but at the same time, there will be technologies that will mean that we can rejuvenate you by more than one year. So in essence, you're actually becoming younger year by year. And he suggests that this is, well, not around the corner, but it's within reach. And we could be there in 12 to 15 years with 50% probability. So he's not promising it, but he's saying it's likely. And what he's also saying is that if you are a healthy 60 year old, you actually have a chance of benefiting from these technologies. And if you're younger and healthy, of, of course, your chance is better or higher. But then what are the most important things we can do today to actually reach longevity escape velocity? I think some of you and myself uh, included was a little bit surprised when we heard what Aubrey had to say. Normally you, you hear about like 
try to eat as healthy as possible, uh, have a very strict exercise regimen, get as much quality sleep as possible. But th- those were actually not the key suggestions that uh, Aubrey had had for us. So of course, he does say the biological age is key. It is important to be biological young. It's not the chronological age that really matters. Also, you know, you should not be obese, you should not be smoking, you should try to avoid too much stress, and you should try to to sleep seven or eight hours. But um, most of those areas are actually not that critical, according to Aubrey. What Aubrey suggested is that it's important to find your weak spot because it's the weak spot that is going to kill you in the end. So uh, it doesn't help to train a lot on, let's say, muscle mass or or your lungs, for example, if it turns out that your kidneys are your weak point. So actually finding out the actual weak point in your body and then extending that and then working on, on that area of your health and making sure that, for example, your kidneys will last longer because it doesn't help that your heart is in great condition and if your liver kills you or if your kidneys kill you 20 years before, for example, you start to have any heart issues or, or for example, you get cancer. So find out what your weak point is and try to work on that. That was one of the key points of advice I took away. The other one he is saying it's basically a race against time. So one thing you can of course do is is work on your own bio- biology and and try to stay young, but more importantly the science needs funding and we need more awareness. So what you can actually do is focus more on racing funds so we can actually develop these technologies and get the data we need so you can spread the word and and you can help you know richer people perhaps than yourself if you, if you don't have the funds yourself to actually fund the science to speed up the day that we'll get get longevity escape velocity you can agree or, or disagree obviously with with Aubrey Gray and and his methods, I I do think it makes a lot of sense to try to speed up the development of longevity technology. Whether you then believe we'll actually be able to cure aging or just slow it quite a lot is another question. But uh, of course, it will take funding. That said, I, I, I do believe there's quite a lot we can do ourselves to reduce our biological aging. And this is where I wanted to talk about where the opinion differs between all the people you you see on YouTube talking about longevity. So who who do we have on on YouTube talking about longevity? Peter Atira, we have Brian Johnson, we have Seamland, David Sinclair, Aubrey de Grey as as well, but uh, we have Kurzweil talking about not only the singularity, but also that we will get to live forever. And then we have uh, people like Walter Longo and Mark Human. They each come with their different approach and different opinions in terms of where their focus is and what's most important if you want to live a longer life. But let's try and have a look at it here and, and, and we can see the chart in front of us. Some of them have opinions about longevity, escape, velocity, or in other words, the day that we will cure aging or be able to rejuvenate ourselves at a faster pace than we actually age. What we see here is there are the clear optimists uh, and that category, I would say, you would have Kurzweil who believes that already in, in around 2030, we will see longevity, escape, velocity. Aubrey de Grey is probably the second most optimistic, closely followed by David Sinclair, who all believes that when we reach some point in the 2040s, we will have cured aging. The other, I would call them uh, influencers in this area who talk about longevity, they're not nearly as clear about their beliefs on longevity escape velocity. But looking at at the different elements to, to what they would actually recommend uh, you to do if, if you want to experience uh, longevity escape velocity. Uh, then, for example, one of the areas is do supplements work? And and here we do see some divide. Um, in my conversation with Aubrey de Grey, 
he said, well, it's it's not very clear whether you are actually going to live longer using supplements. Uh, on the other hand, if, if you look at what Ray Kurzweil, Brian Johnson or David Sinclair is doing, it's very clear that, that they think that supplements are very important. Kurzweil and Brian Johnson, they both take, I, I think, 100 plus supplements a day to keep their biological age lower. David Sinclair takes a little bit less. If we look at, at Seamland, he also does believe it's going to be helpful. So so most of the experts here, they think uh, that supplements are helpful. Uh, Aubrey the Great does not say don't take any supplements. I, I think his point is more, you know, find out what you are lacking and then take that. But there's no reason really to fill yourself with supplements. So definitely, it's it's as a consumer, it's hard to pick uh, what to choose here. You can either go all in and and have a supplement stack of a hundred products, like for example Brian Johnson or, or Kurzweil, or you could limit it to what's most important. But I think my advice here would be okay, you know, try to find out number one what is most important, like. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to go through a full stack here. You can easily find that uh, on the internet. But like most people, for example, uh, recommend um, omega-3 uh, oils. So that would be one. So I, I have a very simple stack myself. And, and I think at least start there. Then get your blood work done. Get some tests done beyond that to see if there's anything you're lacking. And then start supplementing. So I think at least getting to that level could help you and and would would be kind of a safe bet in terms of of how to reduce your biological age and the other one uh, would be exercise so again here i think opinions are are divided so for example again Aubrey the great he does not uh, put a lot of importance on on exercise is um, saying that you should not be obese but having a, a very strict regimen of exercise does not seem to help with your uh, longevity uh, of course this is an area where where there's a, a lot of difference of opinion if you look at seamland uh, he emphasizes more the importance of of exercise brian johnson as well i think both of, of these men, they have a fat percent that is around the 10 mark. So, so they are definitely uh, in great shape in, in terms of their muscles and, and how lean they are. A guy like Peter Tira, for example, it is uh, also his main focus is, is about uh, the, the exercise routine. So there's some difference here on, on what the focus should be on, where you have, for example, Ray Kurzweil, he's saying, well, you should focus on all the, these things, but in the end, it will be nanobot technology that will give you eternal life. Aubrey de Grey is also on the technology side saying, you know, just live reasonably healthy and, and do what your mother told you to extend your life. Um, but it will be technology in, in the end uh, that, that will make you live a much longer or maybe an internal life. So another point would, would be your sleep routine. Again, you, you would see people like uh, Brian Johnson and Peter Atia saying, well, this is crucial for a longer life. And, and most would say definitely that, that sleep is, is important. Uh, but again, um, for example, Aubrey de Grey would put less emphasis on, on this. When it comes to to whether funding or not is is key. I I get I think it depends on your perspective, right? So if you really think that technologies will actually make us live for forever, and that is the main key. So it's just about actually getting to a level of technology that can rejuvenate us enough. Then of course funding will be critical. If you're more into how you can become younger biologically or slow aging biologically by exercising or eating healthy, then, then obviously funding is not that important. Though, of course, some funding is necessary no matter what, because it will also increase the level of data we have to actually determine what will extend our lives and what will not. But to, to clear up a little bit more of the confusion of what people are saying and why they are saying what they are saying, 
I think it's important to to assess that there are different categories of of these people. So I've I've chosen uh, the people on the chart that we saw before because they are the most likely ones that you will encounter when you go on, for example, YouTube or the other social channels. But you actually can't really compare them because there are scientists who are working in the labs on rejuvenation uh, therapies, and they will have a much different focus than the people who are working on exercise and and diet routines um, and are talking about that. So the the people who are actually in the labs would be people like David Sinclair or Brader Gray, but it would also be a whole ton of people you have never heard about. So for example, Judith Campisi, um, Steve Horvath, Elizabeth Blackburn, and also Walter Longo. So of course they would have a different perspective because they are working on, on actually you would say curing aging, while the other people you hear from, they are more sort of experimenting with their own bodies and trying to see what works to keep them younger. So you could say uh, the influencers here who are talking about longevity and who are educating people on on how uh, to live longer and a more healthy life, you would have Seamland, who I do think is currently the, the world champion in terms of lowering his biological aging. Um, so definitely his his point have a lot of merit because he's kind of proving his own concept in, in that way. Brian Johnson, I would almost say he is doing lab research um, where he is the experiment because everything he eats and every exercise he does, he looks at the data and then tries to conclude what works. But still, he's working with the technology that is available at the moment. Uh, to my knowledge, is not trying to develop new technologies or new medicines that will extend life. He is instead trying to increase the pool of data we have available to how his body reacts, but it seems that the data will be uh, usable for a lot of different people as well, because even though our bodies are different, there are also a lot of similarities. Of course, uh, Mark Human and uh, Andrew Steele would, would be other people uh, who would kind of educate us and, and talk about how we can extend our lives. So I, I think it's not so much they disagree, it's more about their perspective really being different. And I think that the final category we probably hear the least about would be the investors. So. Um, the most known investors who actually talk about longevity would be Peter Diamantis and Tony Robbins. They, they both write books about the, the future. They're very influential. Um, so they have invested in a company called Fountain Life, which is pretty much about scanning, uh, as I understand it. So actually uh, trying to find out if something is going wrong in your body at a very early stage. Uh, Some people actually say we do have the cure for cancer. It's all about actually detecting it early. Then we can do something about it. And so this is the theory uh, I believe that Fountain Life is based on. It's a health check to make sure that you catch diseases in time uh, for us to do something about them. Then you have uh, Sergey Brin and Larry Page. Uh, maybe you don't know them, but they're the founders of, of YouTube. Um, and they're also investing quite heavily into uh, longevity. Uh, they're investing into a company called Caligo Life Sciences um, that I believe is part of the Alphabet Group. And the Alphabet Group is, is the group that o- owns, for example, uh, Google and, and uh, YouTube. So that is kind of the arm of that company that works on uh, life extension. So that is where they're investing. Then you have Peter Thiel. Maybe you heard about Peter Thiel. He has been involved in many of the big, big startups um, that became huge companies like PayPal. He has also been involved in Facebook. He is an author, uh, for example, of the book From Zero to One. And uh, he has actually invested with uh, Aubrey de Grey, but now he's investing with a company called Breakout Labs. Um, another famous investor in longevity is Jeff Bezos. 
he's investing with something called Altos Labs. And finally, we have Jim Mellon, who is investing with a company called Juvene Science, so uh, about rejuvenation. When you hear one of these people talk about longevity, just remember that, that their standpoint, right? Are they an investor? Are they an exercise or diet specialist? Or are they somebody who's actually working on rejuvenation technology? So, and I think their perspective will be different, right? So I, I did hear some people criticizing Aubrey the Grey for the way he looked or, or, or that he didn't focus very much on lifestyle. But again, I think that's about his focus. His focus is about getting to a level with the technology where it can actually really help people and is not that interested in, in kind of the exercise part routine of, of the science. So I think it's not that Aubrey the Grey wouldn't say you shouldn't eat healthy, you shouldn't take supplements, or you shouldn't exercise. Um, it's more that this is not where his focus really is. And now um, I wanted to address uh, all the comments that there was in that video with Aubrey the Grey. I, I thought it was fantastic how engaged people were. It was it was great to see. And I, I think we are now getting into a period where we can actually discuss things like curing aging without being uh, ridiculed and called totally crazy. And I think that's the very, I think that's the first really important step that we can actually just start to address it. And, and I think there's a major change. I think uh, number one is addressing it. Uh, the second part is is believing it. I think once a majority of people start believing that, that this may actually happen to themselves, they will start making different decisions. And and this is part of the reason I'm, I'm doing this. I think if I can get more people to believe, well, there's at least a, a chance of us stopping aging at, at some point within our own lifespans, then we'll start to act differently. We'll, we'll do some things like we'll live more healthily ourselves, but we'll also put um, maybe more of our money into our own health, but also the science of actually curing aging itself. I think both will be very positive things. But it also sparks a lot of dialogue. And, and now I'm going to go through some of, of the comments uh, that we saw in the comments section. So, um, one of the comments uh, that I saw here and, and heard quite a lot is like, uh, humans are not supposed to live forever. So I don't know where that comes from. I think it, it kind of comes from a history that that has never happened before in history. So, you know, we we, we just shouldn't do it. it. It's wrong. Again, I think one of the misunderstandings here is we've seen many of these things. We, we've seen when uh, a scientist said, well, the world is not flat. And uh, as a result, it's it you know Rome is not the center of the earth, and and that was not popular with with leadership back then. A few years later, it was recognized by everyone that the world was actually round. Um, we've seen other breakthroughs. I think if if somebody explained what artificial intelligence can do today to somebody about twenty years ago, they would say no, you know it's it's not possible, you know. ChatGPT for what what it can do now that that's not going to happen. Just like people, or some people are still saying you know AGI is not possible. It's not going to happen. It's not supposed to happen. Longevity escape velocity is just one of those things, right? It's it does sound kind of crazy because we haven't discussed it enough. It doesn't mean we shouldn't do it. I actually think we are given our brain and and our brain. Uh, is, is giving us the capability to build tools and perhaps also to build technology that can actually extend our own lives quite significantly. And I think if that is possible, we should use our brains to do that. A lot of people commented on Aubrey de Grey's appearance. Some said that he actually looked old or he didn't look well. I don't think Aubrey de Grey's focus is his own appearance. I, I think his focus is on creating the technology that can cure aging. I, I think, you know, this is where he puts his energy. So he's not in the fitness center. He's not taking a thousand supplements. He is working on raising funds for longevity, uh, escape velocity technology, and then working on the actual technology. So I think he's, he's really busy on that. So I don't think his own looks 
is how we should merit his work at all. That said, uh, I also believe uh, you know he he actually uh, just arrived from Copenhagen, so he had a long flight. He probably had a jet lag. So I think you know that there are good reasons if if you don't think he he looked like a million bucks in in the video. Another opinion I've heard is. Um, even if we can, we should not live longer lives because there are already too many people on the planet. So that could, of course, be the environmental concern that, you know, it's not good for the planet, that there are too many people. I do have a couple of thoughts about that. Uh, so first of all, when, when you travel around the world, it actually does not seem very populated. I mean, most areas are, are completely uh, uninhabited. Um, and the second thing I, I think uh, that is worth to, to consider is that the birth rates around the world are falling quite a lot. So a family of two actually needs 2.1 children to sustain the, the population. So with new constellations in, in families where people may not be, uh, decide to have that many children, uh, I actually think um, it might not be a bad thing that we can actually extend the period where we're young and healthy quite a long time. And I'm not sure it's, it's going to be a problem. And I do think technology will solve for environmental problems of having more people on Earth. So at, at least that is my view. And, and then one thing I hear a lot is, I don't want a longer lifespan because I don't want to be old for longer. I mean, if, if I'm going to be 200 years old, I'm going to be really old for 120 years. Well, I think that's the wrong way of, of looking at it. Here we're talking about uh, technologies that will first stop aging and then start to be able to rejuvenate people. If you're able to, to actually stay alive long enough, we're talking about increasing your health span so we are talking about like getting years where your health is in, in order so it, it's not about being older longer it's actually about having really valuable years and then to, to the people who say well longevity escape velocity is just impossible it, it's never going to happen uh, again i think you know that we've seen so many technologies where people are like it's never going to happen when the car was invented you know people were looking in disbelief when the plane was invented people were looking in, in disbelief so uh, again i i think it's it's not reasonable to say that anything is is impossible to invent i think one of the the really important questions to address is will longevity technology just be for the rich so I think in the beginning, maybe yes. In the beginning, it, it might be very expensive, just like mapping your DNA. But that price has decreased um, significantly over the years. And I think the same with hap will happen with uh, technologies that can rejuvenate you. So maybe in the first two, three years, uh, they might not be available to all. But I think the benefits for society are so great and, and scale economics of, of doing it that we will see prices decline very, very quickly. So yes, it may be elitist in the beginning, uh, but I think it will be broadly available uh, a few years after it has been invented. And then I had uh, a question also, um, like will people have a choice whether enough to actually accept these life extending medicines? Um, I'm pretty sure they will. I mean, just like you have a choice today whether or not you will be treated for a cancer, for example, or whether or not you want to take supplements, then I'm pretty sure this will not be mandatory. It's something that you will have your choice whether to, to age, you would call it naturally, or to use technology to, to age at a slower pace. And then finally, uh, I, I had a comment with one saying, God would not allow longevity escape velocity. Um, and of course, it, it depends on your religious beliefs. I do believe that um, we've been given a brain and and our body for a reason, and, and that reason is to develop new technologies and, and continue to make life on Earth better. So I think, again, this is the same, right? If, if our brain is capable of developing artificial intelligence and, and technologies that can help create longevity escape velocity. I think we're actually meant to use those technologies. 
the best possible way. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I hope you enjoy the video. See you soon again.